Cooperation between countries in the ASEAN region has developed and transformed in so much ways. To learn more about it, here is ASEAN News for you with me, Vanessa. The United Arab Emirates will establish agreement with Timor Leste in the oil and other sectors. Abdullah Salim al Dahiri, the United Arab Emirates ambassador, met with Timor Leste's Prime Minister Karal Shanana Guzmaun and talked about bilateral relations between both countries. Al Dahiri affirmed the United Arab Emirates is ready to support Timor Leste in the oil sector, agriculture, and other areas. In order to open uh, the new avenues of collaborations and uh, find uh, areas of uh, common interest between uh, the both countries in uh, many different sectors. Uh, we've discussed uh, food security, agriculture, uh, education, oil and gas, uh, infrastructure. Uh, uh, so uh, I believe uh, after the visit of uh, His Excellency the President to the United Arab Emirates, we will definitely see a positive outcome that would help uh, elevate uh, the relationship to a new height. During the meeting, Al Dahiri, the ambassador of the United Arab Emirates, informed the Timorese Prime Minister about the visit of Timor Leste's President Jose Ramos Horta to the United Arab Emirates and also invited Shanana Guzman to participate in climate change high level meeting in November the 30th until 12th of December this year. The Asian Development Bank will continue support Timor Leste's development process. Country Director of the Asian Development Bank, Stefani Dina, stated that the Asian Development Bank will continue to support Timor Leste's national development process through various supports from the ADB. Ms. Dina informed this after her meeting with the Timorese Prime Minister, Shalana Guzmaun, and to discuss about future cooperation with Timorese government. I said that today we concentrate on our ongoing portfolio, which is uh, basically uh, supporting national road construction as well as uh, water supply and uh, electricity uh, modernization. So um, we are looking into supporting even more in terms of the capacity building and accelerating uh, the disbursement process with uh, faster processes like uh, electronic you know, disbursement as well so that uh, we can uh, contribute you know, to the government to process at the same time the, where they are looking as well from that side to streamlining and uh, improving the efficiency of the overall process. Uh, as I said, you know, the, we discussed especially uh, what were the issues of the implementation. So the recommendation is uh, really to get uh, the current projects benefiting to the people of Timor-Leste. That's a priority. So to have uh, an efficient implementation of uh, current projects. ADB had supported Timor Leste since 1999, and in the present time, the ADB maintained to support Timor Leste's government in order to diversify the economic of the country. ADB also offers 700.5 million US dollar loan subsidy and technical assistance to the Timor Leste's public sector. Jakowi officially declared the operation of Jakarta Bandung High Speed Railway. Indonesian President Joko Widodo declared the beginning of the official operation of the Jakarta Bandung High Speed Railway at Halim Station in Jakarta. At the launch ceremony, Widodo said the high speed railway with a speed of 300 km per hour is the first high speed train in Indonesia and Southeast Asia, marking the modernization of Indonesia's transportation mode. He announced the name of the high speed railway, Hush, inspired by the sound of the train, and declared that Hush was ready to be operated. Widodo said the technology used in the high-speed railway and the speed achieved are all brand new to Indonesian people. Representatives from the Chinese Embassy in Indonesia, China Railway International Group and PT Kereta Cepat Indonesia China attended the ceremony. Last Friday, the Indonesian Transportation Ministry issued an operating license to the KCIC and joint venture consortium between Indonesian and Chinese firms that constructs and runs the high-speed railway. The high-speed line is spanning 142.3 km and connecting Indonesia's capital Jakarta and the fourth largest city Bandung. It is a flagship project that synergizes the China-proposed Belt and Road Initiative and Indonesia's global maritime fulcrum strategy and also signature project of pragmatic cooperation between China and Indonesia. It is the first time that Chinese railway systems, technology and industrial components have been fully used in high-speed railway construction projects overseas.
Indonesian President Joko Widodo inaugurated the Indonesia's first high-speed railway. Indonesian President Joko Widodo inaugurated a 7.3 billion US dollar high-speed railway connecting the country's capital with the city of Bandung, a China-backed project that has been merged with problems. The Jakarta-Bandung high-speed train is the first high-speed train in Indonesia and the first in Southeast Asia with a speed of 350 km per hour. The 142-kilometer, 88.23 miles railway, one of the president's flagship infrastructure projects and part of China's Belt and Road Initiative, has faced problems ranging from land procurement issues, pandemic-related delays, and ballooning costs. Ada banyak masalah dan kendala yang kami temukan. Dimulai dari masalah. There were many issues and challenges we found in the construction process from the classic issue of land acquisition, inadequate coordination, and difficulty in funding due to the COVID-19. The President is therefore not surprised that many were pessimistic that this project could be completed. However, on this historical day, we proved that this project can be completed and operated. This is not without good teamwork from all parties, including the central government, local government, state-owned enterprises, private sectors and public, as well as the Chinese government and its related companies, all working together to finish this project. The maximum operating speed is 350 km per hour, 217 meter per hour, Choco is state of the train, built by a consortium of Indonesian and Chinese companies. Luhut Panjaitan, a senior minister overseeing the project, said at the launch that free trial rides on the bullet train, which have been underway since the second week of September, will be extended and ticket prices will be implemented in mid-October. Indonesia has first high-speed railway in Southeast Asia. The Jakarta-Bandung High-Speed Railway, which is the first high-speed railway in Southeast Asia, has entered the daily life of Indonesian people after President Joko Widodo declared its official beginning of the operation at Halim Station in Jakarta. At the ceremony, the President announced the name of the railway whoosh, inspired by the sound of the train, saying that the high-speed train marks the modernization of the country's mode of transportation, which is efficient, environment-friendly, and integrated with other public transportation tools. The service line is a flagship project under China's Belt and Road Initiative, cooperation with Indonesia and connects two of the nation's major cities, stretching 140 kilometers. This railway links Indonesia's capital Jakarta with the country's fourth largest city. Traffic between the two cities has been very busy, as pre-pandemic data suggested 40 million cars commuted between Jakarta and Bandung every year and another 4 million commuters used intercity trains. The commute used to take at least three hours, but could sometimes be more than double that, with high-speed rail commute time has been reduced to less than 45 minutes. Fernando Suherlim is a younger engineer from Jakarta who has been working on the jakarta Bandu High-Speed Railway for three years. It's an honor for me, actually, because it is also my first job since I was graduated from university in 2019. With a design speed of up to 350 km per hour, the jakarta Bandung High-Speed Rail makes Indonesia the second country in the world to have the fastest commercial train in operation in addition to China. The jakarta Bandung High-Speed Railway is the one with the highest technical standards among Chinese high-speed series. This railway also means that it makes Indonesia the second country across the globe to have fast commercial trains operating at the speed of 350 km per hour apart from China. There are four stations along the rail Halim in Jakarta, Kagaluar in Bandung, Karawang, and Padalarang. Rail transport has the advantages of large capacity for both passengers and cargo transportation, providing a great solution to rising logistics costs in Indonesia. China urges Philippines not to provoke in the South China Sea. China firmly safeguards the sovereignty and the maritime rights and interests of the Huangyan Island, Wang Wenbin, spokesman of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, said. The Philippine Coast Guard said it has removed a floating barrier installed by China in the adjacent waters of Huangyan Island. Speaking at a regular press conference, Wang stressed that the Philippines is advised not to make troubles. <laughs>
Huangyan Island is China's inherent territory. China has sovereignty over it and its adjacent waters, and has sovereign rights and jurisdiction over relevant waters, the spokesman pointed out at Monday's press conference. Thank you so very much, everyone, for head tuning today. We'll see you all again sooner with the latest and the most updated news from the ASEAN region. And enjoy your day.